this afternoon we've come and um, we have a guest with us and I want to introduce him. I'm probably going to say his name wrong a couple of times and I'm just going to call him um, Joab, but <laughs> we'll get to that. But his name is Joab Notem, right? Rotem. Rotem. Yes. Okay. And uh, he's visiting uh, here from Israel and uh, I've got some questions I'm going to ask him, but I'm going to let him do a lot of the talking. He is a tour guide, and uh, he's here, and uh, I'm glad he's here. So, brother, so much. Thank you. Appreciate you coming so much. And so uh, a couple of questions I want to ask you. I've written some things down. Um, tell me about yourself and your faith and your family. All right. So my name is Yoav Rotem. I'm native Israeli. I am Jewish. My family, I have a wife and two kids, um, eight and five years old, boy and a girl. Oh. And we live right outside of Jerusalem. Um, I'm 41, and for the past 20 years, I've been leading tours inside Israel um, of mainly American groups, and the past 10 years, mainly Christian tours, churches and private tours in the land, seeing the, the word of the Bible in the world of the Bible, I always like to say that, and basically, um, since October 7th happened, I am... Um, from various of reasons, but the main reason is that I understood that the main front for us um, to fight is right over here in America. This is what I'm doing here. I lost my job. There's no tourism in Israel. So I, I actually made a presentation, created a nice presentation that I run, go around the states and, and, and speak for the truth of Israel to acknowledge people and acquit people with the understanding that few things. First of all, we're not going anywhere. It's our home. Yeah. Second, all the truths that they don't hear in the news and the media and how to understand it better. Good. Good. Okay. So now you live right outside of Jerusalem? Right. Outside. Now I've heard about safe houses. Tell me about those. How are those? Oh, safe rooms. Safe rooms. Okay. I actually have a picture. I took um, um, a week before I left, stuck in traffic and next to me I had a truck with a safe room on it. Safe room is basically a room that uh, that all of the walls and the, and the ceiling and the floor is made out of heavy cement, okay. uh, concrete, okay. with steel inside. A little mini bomb shelter that can protect you from a rock falling on the house, uh. which means you're in the room. Even if it's a big rock not hitting the room dire directly, you'll survive. Uh, unfortunately, we live in a very old house that doesn't have it. In Israel, since the end of the 90s, if I remember correctly, it's mandatory to build a new place. You have to have um, a safe room. I grew up in, in, by the border with Lebanon and Syria in the north in a small community that we, we didn't have the safe rooms. We had a different reality. We had rockets from the Lebanon back then in the 90s. And we had to stay in the bomb shelter uh, for two weeks, yeah. sleep in the bomb shelter because we didn't know when the rockets will come. One of amazing gifts that Israel has today um, is is the alerting system, the siren. So we we know that rockets are coming. Uh, so around Jerusalem, we have about a minute and a half to run into the safe room. Minute and a half. Minute and a half, right next to the Gaza border, they have less than 15 seconds. They've been suffering over, two, over 20 years from rockets in, into Israel from Gaza once in a while, and they have less than 15 seconds, one five. Now, we don't have a safe room in our home, so what do we do? We run to the neighbors. We have an agreement with them. Their door is open. That's what happened on October 7th. When I woke up in the morning, my mom actually called, and my son picked up the phone because I was sleeping, and then, it's, you know, Shabbat is the day sure. of rest. We, sleep in a little bit. He's coming with the phone, telling grandma is on the phone, my mom, and she's telling me, you're sleeping and there's a war outside. <sighs> and I thought, again, she's complaining that I'm too lazy and I'm sleeping too late <laughs> instead of doing something with the kids. And, you know, you open the phone, you see the whole reality. And um, 15 minutes later, we have a siren. We, ra we ran to the neighbors, closing the door, boom. A rocket hit a quarter of a mile from us in the uh, vineyards. Oh my goodness! Yes. Yeah. But later on, in the next three three weeks, we still had a few sirens. One of them actually, a rocket fell in the Arab village next to us and killed an Arab Muslim guy. Uh -huh. We have good neighbor, good uh, Muslim Arab neighbors that we coexist with them. Uh -huh. And one was killed by Hamas rocket. Hmm. 
So how, how is the mood of the people in Israel since October 7th? Is, has it changed or is, is life trying to get back to somewhat normal or is there still a lot of different changes? It's a great question. Yeah. Because there's something heavy on the heart. Of, at least I feel it and I, I know my wife and I know my family. Uh -huh. It's a shame, it's fear, it's uh, also this understanding that we have 133 hostages in Gaza that are suffering from every moment. You know, every time you... There's also a trauma, uh -huh. because even myself, that hasn't been into a, one of these situations, you know, we saw it, and I can really feel for these people that for the last moment they were screaming and the terrorists shooting their head or throwing yeah. a grenade into the, in, in the fest festival or in the homes. Um, so these are all things, but aside of that, there is something that Israel was always good at, is the desire um, for life. Mm -hmm. And I think this is, you can find it a lot in Judaism, the, the commandment for joy, to be happy. Yeah. It's, it's not just, uh, you know, something that you want. You have to, God, God wants us to be happy. Right. Um, and, and yes, there are, there's areas that are completely not functioning, like the very up north and the south. But Tel Aviv and Jerusalem and the area, and some people go out and we don't go party, but there's still always a heavy feeling. Yeah. We're getting closer to the Independence Day in May, middle of May. And there's a big debate in Israel whether we should have a ceremony with celebration or, or to just commemorate it somehow on all the people that lost their life. Right. It's a debate. Some people agree. Some people want to, you know, not, not to let terror and not to let the, our enemies to control our joy. When well, Ecclesiastes says there's time to mourn, there's a time, time to cry. You know, I understand that. But just the, the fact that the weight, knowing that, you know, the rockets are going to come again, you know, unless something's done. And so you have that, and so there's, I, I can understand there being anxiousness there. That and again, you're kind of holding your breath, waiting on the next shooter drop, you know, what's, what's coming next. But also the big failure. Our army is yeah. something that we're so proud of. We were, we were all been to the army. We know that the Israeli army is us. It's not someone will take care of something. Right. And it failed. You know, the intelligence and, yeah. and also the leadership, but, but, but the army failed to protect the citizens. It's, it's something that never happened inside Israel in such a big Why? Um, amount. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you lose your, it's also confident and security in a way. This is why we're all alert now and <laughs> in my community we, we have much more weapon, not, not private weapon, but communal weapon that we will protect if needed. You know, we have kind of a first responder team. Okay. I was recruited to the reserve for five months. I was sitting and guarding at the gate in the community uh, to, to make sure that, you know, nothing like this will happen. Right, right. Oh. That's, that's difficult. You know, being a single person, okay, I, you know, you can work through it. But then you got a wife and, you, like you said, your children, eight and five, you know. I mean, that's, that's a lot. Now, where's your mother live close? No. No. They live two and a half hours away, uh, but they come and help. Oh, yeah. They yeah. live not far from the Sea of Galilee. Oh, that's a tough place to live. I love living. Um, when we go there, we stay in the, in the hotels, and it's beautiful. Love it. It's yeah, it's great. Beautiful. Yeah. So one special. year, though, when I go, I want to get on a jet ski and just ride on the Sea of Galilee. I just <laughs> want to do that one time. But when we go, they're not renting them, you know, that time. So, yeah, I want to do that one time when I go. Yes. That would be fun. But the boat ride's always, always, you know, that's wonderful. I have a friend that has a wooden boat yeah. with an electric engine. Okay. So there's no, no noise. noise. Yeah. So it's very nice to go on it because it's quiet and you can hear the water. And yeah. Everything. That's something unique. <sighs> yeah. I love that place. I love that place. So what, what do you think about the next step um, for Israel? It's all in the news. And I listen to a guy, um, I get his blog, and I get his updates um, 
um, Amir Tesfardi. I, 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 Amir Tesfardi, I, everyone. Yeah, everyone. I, everybody, yeah, because I always, you, you get it from him, and then, you know, two hours later it shows up somewhere else. And so, and he corrects himself if something's not right. But, um, you know, what do you, what do you think about the next move with, with Rafa, Israel yeah. going in there, and then, you know, what are you going to do with Iran? What do you think they're going to do? From what I'm reading and understanding, there's a great opportunity for Israel, which I'm not so sure is right. Yeah. Uh, but it's a great opportunity to push Iran strategically to sanctions that haven't been not only from America, from other Europe and other places, which can be very good. Because uh -huh. we should always need to think about the strategical thinking, not the tactics, like not at this moment. So at this moment, it was right to bomb them back, yeah. to show them yeah. being stronger. But I, I feel like that's, that's going to come. But part of the deal with the American government is that we won't uh, pull America into a war in Iran, and we will do Rafa. Don't forget that Iran, with all this weapon that she has, mm -hmm. it's only a few thousand of rockets. As long as they don't have the nuclear weapon, they're not a threat. Right. I mean, these rockets are, can be harmful. We can deal with them. What's the problem with Iran are the proxies. They're, what they have in Lebanon, what they are building, trying to build in Syria, what they have in Yemen. So all, Lebanon, you don't need these heavy rockets that cost millions to, be, to build. They have hundreds of thousands, 150,000 small rockets mm -hmm. that can cause a lot of damage. Yeah. And this can actually, if they shoot 1,000 or 2,000 at once, it can trick the Israeli defense systems. That's the main problem. So maybe Israel will take advantage of, instead of attacking directly to Iran, hitting Hezbollah very badly. Mm -hmm. I think, in my opinion, this will be even a better um, decision, because if we're going to destroy Hamas, which was part of the, we call it the octopus, mm -hmm. one arm of the octopus, and Hamas is not a threat anymore, and if we're going to finish them all the way, and maybe international forces will get over Gaza and start to fix it, and Marshall Plan and everything, mm -hmm. Which, which I believe a, a Marshall Plan with education and civilians yeah. can help the Palestinians. Give them something they've never had, yeah. Yes. And, um, and if we're going to do Lebanon next, so then you cut the two arms of the octopus, uh -huh. then strategically we can, we can be better. Hmm. But so I think, I hope my leaders are thinking the same. I really see Rafa happening soon. Yeah. Uh, we will start seeing pamphlets telling the people to move again to the beach or somewhere. It's getting warmer. It's the summer, so basically there's no fear of floods or any rain. Right. They're talking about today how all the tanks are moving down toward that way. Yes. Yeah, I was watching that. Yeah, there's different rumors. Yeah. The, the news, the, and there's also things that our army is sharing with the media purposely. So I, until it happens, I don't know. It's a game, yeah. Yeah. But they when have to it do happens, that. we will know for sure. Oh yeah. I don't know if it's going to bring any solution to Gaza, but definitely we need to get rid of the uh, Hamas forces in Rafah. The octopus. Yeah, dangerous. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do you have any questions for me? Um, when are you coming next? <laughs> you said that you're supposed to be there, right? Next April. We're supposed to go next week, but it'll be next April before we come. I, I want to say something for yeah. people who are watching and, and you. Israel is my home, and I know it because of many reasons. My grandparents were pushed out of Iraq and out of Europe, out of the Holocaust, mm -hmm. and they came home. They never said anything about the fact that they're refugees or not. And I actually share my, in my presentation, I share the whole story. We are called Jews because the land, we are coming from a land and a tribe and identity that is beginning with Judea or Judah. Actually, this coin is a coin from the destruction of the Second Temple. That, um, and it says, Judea, Judea, Capta. Uh -huh. that the Romans destroyed and they made a coin to make it more painful to the Jews. Uh -huh. The land is Judah, and we, we belong to there. But there's something for you over there as well, I think. And everyone that are reading the Bible, the roots of the faith uh -huh. are over there. Yeah. And I think whoever, been, whoever haven't been to Israel, this is the place to really get the context and understanding the words of the Bible in the right context, how it happened 
what was said, how it was said, the geography, the weather, um, the food, <laughs> not exactly the same, but some things, yeah. you, need the, you, need the, you need the good <laughs> directions to explain what was in the first century in the, Jew, in the Jewish life and what was not. And I want to say also that Israel is, it's going to be funny what I'm going to say now, or maybe a little bit weird, but Israel is safe. With all what we hear in the news, yeah. my kids are sleeping now, right now they're sleeping in the room and there's no safe room, and my heart is feeling okay with it, yeah. and I'm far away, and not, because, not only because my wife is a superhero, also <laughs> because, uh, because Israel is safe and we do trust our army. We've seen what happened two weeks ago on Saturday night, unbelievable reality. And whoever feels that that's the right time to come, I admire people to come. Yeah. Why? We need the support. We need the uh, uh, solidarity of standing. And also, there's a lot of truth in the land that, that only when you see it, you understand it, and it enables you to be confident to share it with others. Yeah. What we've experienced in our, in our trips uh, is the fact that uh, whenever we come down out of the mountain and we come in, and right when we come in under that tunnel, when we come into Jerusalem, it's almost like, okay, we're home now. Yes. Because we're going to be home one day there. Yes. You know, biblically. And so we, we sense that, and, it's, and it's, there's always a, uh, it's like there's a hush that just comes over us. And we're so comfortable and we're so relaxed. And, uh, and then the sad part is when you got to leave. You say, okay, I got to go back to crazy because I'm coming back home and all the nuts. But it, it is, and, and it's an incredible place. It is incredible. I, everywhere we go, you know, and of course, you know, you've, you've got all the tourist stuff. But once you get past that, you know, and you focus, what we tell our people in the groups that we take, you know, so you're going on a spiritual journey, mm -hmm. you know. And so, you know, when we read scripture and we do devotions, we do all the things, you know, to help them to connect, you know, and sense it. You know, we always end up at the Garden Tomb, you know, um, Golgotha and Garden Tomb. And uh, then we, you know, we have Lord's Supper, you know. And, and but then that's always, that's like the capstone. That, that puts it all together, you know. Yes. But it, it's, yeah, I love going. And I'm, I'm praying Lord's going to let us go next year. And, and When you come, you're more, more than welcome. We have a nice place. There's a very good lamb I know how to cook. Yeah. And you're more than welcome. You have schnitzel? Schnitzel. We can do schnitzel. Charles and I, we love schnitzel. <laughs> we eat it three times a day. We grill. Okay, uh, well, that'll be great. Well, listen, I'm going to be praying for you and your family. Thank you. And for your nation. Thank you. And um, there's a Psalm 122 says, you know, we need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And, and we need to ask God that God's going to keep his hand on it. You know, what, you, what the people sense, you know, was, okay, the military and the IDF and all their, you know, their technology was great, you know, knocking down all those rockets and missiles. But I could just see the hand of God just holding it, just knocking them off. You want to hear a crazy story okay. about this hand of God? Yeah. <clears throat> so it's all a matter of faith. My wife, I'm in San Antonio that night. Uh, my friend wanted to take me uh, on a pig hunting journey. You know, if, if you don't eat the pig, at least kill them. Yeah. <coughs> and we started to get the news That's good. of, of yeah. um, 100 drones uh, coming to Israel with explosives. And Im immediately we canceled the, uh, we watched the, the news and my wife calling me and telling me, listen, you found your, you know, you found a great time not being here. I'm nervous. <laughs> she's, crying, she's crying a little bit. And, I, and the kids are already sleeping. And I told her, listen, you, there's not too much you can do. Put some mattresses at the neighbors. You know, if needed, you can run and keep on sleeping there. And I'm like, I feel so much guilt. Yeah. And, and then we hang, you know, the, the phone and, and, and I sit and watch the news. And, and, and the guilt, you know, I, like my wife is like, she can't <laughs> sleep and she's nervous. And, a few hours later, when, when I start getting all the sirens in Jerusalem, you know, and it's like a big, you know, uh, it's coming, they're there. I'm calling her to see that she's fine. <laughs> and, and she's mad at me. She's telling me, you just woke me up. <laughs> so what are you, she, she what are you really, calling me for? <laughs> she, she really trusted. Yeah. And she felt safe and she went to bed. She uh. was sleeping while it's all happened. And there was no siren in our community, so she could she could make it to the rest of the night without me calling. <laughs> That's good. Yes. That's good. All right. Well thank you so much. Thank you. Let me pray for you. 
Lord God, I thank you for my brother. Thank you that we can have this time together. I pray that you keep your hand upon him. Continue, Lord, to use him to share his faith, share his story about an incredible nation called Israel. And Lord, one day, one day, Lord, we'll all be together there serving the King of kings and the Lord of lords. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. All right, thank you.